What is up everybody, Gary Simon here. Yes, just recently I bought the new Call of Duty Vanguard here on PC and I've been playing it uh, in between working. What I actually do is I get on uh, Call of Duty Search and Destroy and when I die, I just alt tab over to Figma and that way I can play and work at the same time. It's awesome. Anyhow, what I noticed is their menu system I thought was pretty cool. It's based on like four columns and you hover over them and they change and they animate. So I thought it might be cool to create a tutorial to show you exactly how to do this in HTML and CSS. So our version simply looks like this. Very similar to what they have going on, although not exactly, of course, but there's no JavaScript in, involved in this and no animation platforms, just straight up good old fashioned HTML and CSS. So as always, make sure to check out designcourse.com, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. Now wait one moment, if you're interested in this sort of thing and making cool user interfaces reality in the browser, you should definitely check out the front end developers career path at scrimba.com. They've recently launched their front end development career path, which is a collection of courses that cover HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and much, much more as you see. It's over 75 hours of awesome content. There are hundreds of interactive coding challenges and it's all geared towards helping you go from beginner to someone that's hireable as a front end developer. So click on the very top link in the YouTube description to get access to the front end developer career path at scrimba.com. All right, so we're gonna revert back to this. This is just a screenshot of the menu itself. Um, there's always you know, one of these four columns that are being hovered over. And we're gonna try to get pretty close to this. And so let us get started. So Visual Studio Code, I already have an index.html file. Um, I just hit the exclamation point enter to get what we have here so far. But I also linked up this CSS file. I think it's a little bit larger, you can see it. Um, we have two other folders, a CSS folder, and inside of it we have a main.sass file that's empty at this point, but I click watch sass, you'll need the um, live sass compiler or the extension rather uh, for that, in order for that to work right here. And then also um, we're gonna right click and open with live server, and you're gonna need the live server extension as well for that to work, and of course it's completely blank because uh, it is white, yeah, because we have no HTML markup essentially in our body tag. So um, also we have images right here as well. So if I click on these, um, this is gonna be the background. As we can see, there's a, um, uh, if we go back to the this here, the background for this should be lower contrast ideally. Um, and so that's why I cho chose like a, a dark, um, sort of a, a much darker image so that the foreground elements stick out more. And then um, here's like four different pictures or photographs, just of terrain. Um, and that's gonna be when you hover over those columns, this is gonna, these things are gonna show up. These are all from Unsplash. All right, so go ahead and um, you can search for those just by typing in, um, I think like terrain and leafs or something like that. Anyhow, let's get started. So for our markup, we're gonna have just a single container I uh, called container. You could actually just emit this and make body the container. It's 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 not a big deal though. Uh, we're just gonna do div class container and then we're gonna have four columns inside of it. Div class container will be a uh, CSS grid where we have grid template columns repeat for one fractional unit. So we'll get to that in a little bit though. Um, so we just need four elements, four child elements inside of here. So we're gonna call these features and inside of the feature, we're gonna have an image source of images forward slash image one dot JPG. And then also we'll have a class of feature hyphen image and an alt of, um, I don't know, I think this, we'll just say terrain. All right, that's gonna be the background image of the column when they're hovered over. All right, so then we're gonna have a div class of content Inside of here, we're gonna have H3, an amazing experience, because there's like a type inside of each one of those columns, and then an A, uh, href going nowhere with a class of CTA of learn more. And this right here will be hidden by default, but only show up if it's being hovered over. And then that is it. So we take our div class feature, and we paste that three more times. So we have four total. And let's just change this to two, three, and four. I'm gonna leave all the type the same. You get the idea. 
And that's all we have for our markup. So now if we check up uh, our situation, this is what it looks like. All right, not very exciting. So we have some work to do. So we're gonna go back to our main.sass and this is where we're gonna spend the rest of our time. Um, so we're gonna do a body element here, height of 100 viewport height, margin zero. The reason we wanna set the, the body height of 100 viewport height is because by default it's not, and we want these columns to go from the very top to the very bottom. Uh, margin zero to get rid of any default margin pad, uh, padding and white space. Background is in black, and we're gonna choose our background. It's that leafy image right here. Um, color, just changing all the font color to white, and then font family is Poppins. If you don't have that installed, and if there were a real project, you would want to import that. It's a Google font. You would be, you would import it right here inside of the head area somewhere up here, uh, or actually before the CSS file. All right, so if we save that and we look at what we have, not going to see much to change. You can see the background right here between these massive images. So right off the bat, we're going to um, go ahead and just focus on our container itself. So the container, if you recall, is the parent container of those four columns. So like I said before, we're going to make it a display grid, a grid template columns of repeat four and one FR. This means they're all going to be the same width essentially. All right, so uh, the reason right now, if we look at the result, um, these are all messed up. <laughs> We're gonna fix that here real quickly. Um, these images aren't responsive. So uh, they're sitting inside, uh, they have a feature image class for the image and then they're inside of feature. So let's do a feature here. Let's nest this in here and put feature image right here in this one. Um, so for feature image, what we'll do is we're gonna specify uh, position absolute. So that'll make them all kind of sit on top of each other. So top zero, left and zero, and then also Z index negative one so that we can see the type sitting on top of it. Um, if we hit save and look at this, it's still gonna be messed up, although we do see our columns up here. All right, so at this point, we're gonna make this opacity zero and we're gonna transition uh, the opacity as well um, no, we're gonna transition to transform actually. So we're gonna actually make these a little bit larger using transform um, scale 1.2. And the reason we're gonna do that is because I, the menu system in Call of Duty, it starts the image out larger and shrinks it in. So we're making it 1.2 times larger and then we're gonna transition that for a, tr a smooth um, transition essentially between them. Uh, so we're gonna do five seconds on that and then for opacity, it'll be 0.3 seconds for that duration. Uh, Cause we're, when you hover, we're gonna change the opacity to one. All right, so now we're not gonna see anything except for the background. Next up, we wanna get these centered in here and we want to make the type larger and fix the button styling and all of that. So let's take our feature. We're gonna use the display grid again so that we can take that type and center it uh, horizontally and vertically within there. So what we'll do is height, 100 viewport height, place items center, and then overflow will be hidden and we'll put position relative on here. And then border right of RGBA, oops, sorry, one pixel solid RGBA, 255, 255, 255. That's the RGB value for white. And then 10% or 0.1 for that. So if we look at it, it's looking better, but the problem is this is very small type. Um, so what we'll do is we'll reference our H3, not H1, what am I doing? H3, and we'll put in font size of 1.3 rem. So we're kind of working at maybe like a tablet size and larger. I did not make this optimized for Mobile, you could probably you would probably want to collapse these into rows, like four different rows instead of columns. I'll leave that up to you all. But now we want to adjust things just a bit. So um, we'll also take our content. Now content, if you recall, is just holding our content inside of each of them. So we have div class content with an H3 and an A element. And so in there, we're going to put uh, a width of 70% and center it horizontally, so it'll be margin um, zero auto. And then also we're gonna transition a transform. Uh, actually, no, we're not gonna do that, I'm sorry. 
got old code that I decided not to use. So if we look at this, this is what we're looking at so far. And then finally, we'll style up that button. Now the button, unfortunately, that's just an A element. Let's we'll come out of here and just change this here. When it comes to styling links and changing them into clickable like buttons, containers, there's a lot of rule sets, but nothing too crazy is happening. One thing to notice, opacity is zero. I'll take that off for a second just to show you what the button looks like. And that is what it looks like. Um, and then we'll, we'll, oops, go ahead and add that back. So on hover, we will show the button only. By default, we are choosing not to, because that's how Call of Duty system was. Okay, um, also, uh, let's see. I think I have everything, and now we can start to do the hovers. So when the feature class is hovered over, this is the way we do it. We put an hover, and we'll make the button uh, show up for this one. So we'll do opacity one, ta-da. And then we come over here, and look, they're showing up, awesome. Um, next up, we'll take our feature image. Uh, oops, I forgot to put and hover, feature image, and we're gonna say opacity one because by right now it's zero, and also transform, we're gonna take the scale and put it back to one because remember we do have it at 1.2 by default, so hover changes it to one. Now I know these are looking really small, we're gonna enlarge these in a second, but I wanna get the hovers working first. Awesome. All right, and then also we'll take uh, up here, let's just copy this, content, and we're going to change content, and we're gonna just uh, make content slightly larger. So we're gonna put transform scale 1.3. So we're gonna make it larger, it's gonna kinda grow, and then also we're gonna change the transform origin left and 50% because the way it was transforming wasn't looking good when I set this project up. Um, and it, yeah, I, I do realize in content, if we want this to transition, we need to do uh, transform 0.3 seconds. All right, so now let's save it and it should kind of grow. Notice how they all grow now. All right, awesome. So now we're gonna come out here, we're gonna do a media query um, and I'm just gonna paste this in. So this is media only screen and min width, uh, 1100 pixels. So 1100 pixels and larger, then we're gonna change a couple things. So I'm about to, <coughs> excuse me, sneeze. Uh, we're gonna change our feature H3 uh, font size. It was 1.3 rem that we had set up for like a tablet size, but now it's gonna be two rem. And the, also we're gonna change the font size of the call to action button. So now if we go back, you can see the larger in right around here, that's 1100 pixels, they change. We'll do it one more time, just a couple more values to change. Uh, this one will change at perhaps 1600. We'll change this to 2.7 rems. And then this one will be 1.3. So now we'll save it. And there we go. And we'll have three different breakpoints right there and here. One, or here's one, two, and three. Now, like I said, it'd be a cool exercise if you guys wanted to uh, maybe around here, kind of transition it maybe into two columns by two rows. And then down here at the uh, phone size, maybe four rows. And so I'd leave that up to you uh, to figure out how to do that. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, everybody, I think it would be a really cool uh, exercise. Like I mentioned, I, if anybody uh, wants to try to make this responsive um, and also try to exactly recreate it, there's one thing I did leave out, but it does re require JavaScript, and that is when you hover over each of the columns, it does actually change the entire background image to a desaturated and kind of like a blurred out version of that image. So if you guys wanna tackle that, I'd love to see what you come up with. So, but as always, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and check out designcourse.com. It's releasing very soon, January 4th, 2022. All right, goodbye. <laughs>